Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Muscatine. I'm one of the co-owners of Politics and Prose. And I'm Mark LaFromboise. I'm the chief book buyer here at the store. And these are our picks for fiction this year. Well, it was a great novels year again. In fact, that was one of the ones we had the hardest time picking books for is because uh, there were so many books that we really loved. And I think I, it's fair to say that you and I are mostly fiction readers to begin with. I mean, when we read for fun, we're mostly reading novels. I think the one book that stood out for us was uh, Zara of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara. You know, he wrote Constellation of Vital Phenomena, which won the Carla Cohen Prize uh, in its first year. Um, it's all the more fun because he grew up here and he grew up shopping here. And he talks about developing his love for books by shopping, you know, politics and prose as a child. And like we told him when he came and read here, he said we were going to support the book no matter what. So it came as a great relief to see that the book was so great. And this is his second great book, which is pretty unusual to be so young and to be so talented and start off with two extraordinary books and to be such a nice guy on top of it. Well, that's a good segue to talk about the sympathizer too, mm -hmm. because it's really about the absurdity of war in a major way. The main character is a, a double agent, which is interesting in itself just as a plot point, but it's really interesting from a structural point from the book because this is the person telling you the story. Mm -hmm. So he's telling you uh, the story from both sides. He literally does walk both sides of it. Uh, one of the one of the really neat things also about the sympathizer like Anthony Mara is that the author is a very young debut novelist, Viet Thanh Nguyen. And uh, I think he's in his 20s only. This is his first novel. And I believe he's now probably the first Vietnamese American to write really significant fiction, at least fiction that's risen to this level. Um, and it's a very raw, very intense book, uh, but again, a, a necessary book and a necessary part of our own country's story. And so uh, it's just, it's quite, quite a feat uh, for such a young writer to have achieved. And um, were he not young, we would still be saying the same thing about it. Uh, one of the books that's been on everybody's year-end list is Ahani Yanagihara's book, A Little Life. It was one of the only, um, one of two, I think, American books that were shortlisted for the Booker Prize this year. It was also uh, shortlisted for National Book Award. So it seems to be on everybody's shortlist, but not winning any awards this year, But which is too bad because it's a, um, a great book and it's really finding its audience because I think it kind of came in very quietly because it was this giant book and this it's her second novel her other book people in the trees did well but but not that well and i think one of the really fun things that we like to do when we put out our our both our holiday newsletter which has close to a hundred titles we recommend from the year but then our top 10 is to be able to showcase books like this that people may not really be aware of that haven't gotten the attention of some other novels but are very, very deserving and that uh, have certainly found an, an incredibly rabid audience on our staff um, who are usually pretty good judges of what's good. So uh, we very happily recommend, recommend this book this year. Uh, Joy Williams is a short story writer, you know, par excellence. And this says some new stories, but these are a lot of the stories that have been uh, coming up through her collections and in the New Yorker, you know, over the past 10 or 20 years even. Yeah. But she's, she's fantastic and she has a great way of, you're talking about the absurdity and, uh, and humor in otherwise serious uh, novels and she does that too. She'll tell these uh, breathtakingly real stories but um, uh, uh, and ex uh, the details of, you know, of uh, an absurd notion really kind of put them into a into a different field entirely. Lauren Groff has just uh, kind of exploded for people this year, although she was already well known again for writing in The New Yorker and um, is somewhat established already, but this this book has just, I think, taken people uh, kind of by their collar and shaken them up, and um, she deals with a obviously a very universal subject, marriage. She looks at it from the points of view of both spouses. And, um, but she uh, somehow unveils things about 
uh, relationships in her writing that few authors have been able to do in the same way. Is that fair, Mark? Oh, definitely fair. And then and the, um, well, the creation of these characters, um, this, this man and woman, you meet them at a very young age, but they're completely unforgettable. And um, also because it's, it's dealing with, you know, the artistic creation. I mean, the main character, Lotto, is, uh, is a playwright. So, we're all, so it's also, uh, besides just studying the, uh, the formation of a very young uh, marriage, but it's also really about artistic creation mm -hmm. in large part, too, which I think is one of the reasons it really uh, succeeds as well as it does. And plus, she is uh, just a great storyteller with a, uh, a great knack for the telling detail and, and also... Um, um, just the the way that she the way that she writes and and, and completely uh, takes you over when you're in the act of reading it. Mm -hmm.